What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic, and I'm pretty excited because we're finally back in the Hover City, and I've got a really awesome Hover City build to come back to, so I, uh, I was kind of taking a little bit of a break from the Hover City there just to kind of play around with the new engine, and there are a few changes that I have to make to the Hover City. Right now, the new engine, I know everyone thought it was going to be this god savior, and it really does help if you have a... Um, uh, a bad computer let's put it that way it helps you get it playing the game and it helps deal with the lag on some of the smaller creations but larger creations like the hover city just don't don't quite work yet but in the meantime i've made another awesome section and this one is of course the hover city office building so I really, I got a lot of requests to make Hover City Skyscraper. Uh, there's been a few requests as well. I am going to get back into doing a lot more Hover City module builds. Uh, even though I can't put them all together yet, I am still going to build them. And uh, so I've got all the connections and stuff as well. Now you'll notice this is no longer this extended plank here. The road plank is no longer on free floating bearings. I still have the switches there. So I can always go back and put free floating bearings on, um, but I'm going to start removing those bearings from the sections because I find when you combine them, it does help a fair amount with the lag. It's not that great still. You can only get like maybe three or four of them, uh, but it is, but it is definitely better. So the new engine, obviously it combines the entire object into one solid object, which is great. But as soon as you put bearings, it interrupts that. But we've got this lovely office building here. So uh, not really too much, just a really simple straight road piece here. Again, with the same uh, welding wiring connection tool. But, you know, really simple stuff. I tried to minimize the number of gates and logic gates because the elevator in this building is awesome. So we're just going to get right in here. Nice little lobby. I love that you can paint bearings now in the new engine. Love the new glass. Looks absolutely great. Just a nice simple lobby. We've got some plants, a lot of walking space, some bathrooms here on the back end. Pretty standard stuff. I don't really know what's in an office lobby, to be perfectly honest, so... You know, this is an all glass office building and then just some sort of, I guess, I don't know if it's a reception desk or security desk, but uh, we've got one of those and that of course being the XOR gate for the door. But we're going to call the elevator here. Of course there is stairs, but who wants to take the stairs? We'll just, uh, it's going to take a while now because there is nine floors in this elevator and this elevator uses something really, really cool. It moves at the same speed for the entire duration of the trip. So a lot of elevators, when you make them, you use a memory bit for each floor. And when you select a floor, you say, okay, I've selected the fourth floor. So I have to activate four pistons or deactivate four pistons, depending on how it's set up. But this one actually activates each piston one at a time until the elevator gets here. So you can see it's finally coming down. If we look at the connection tool, you can see it. There it comes. And then uh, the doors will open here. That's just lovely. And it's got a wicked glass floor and you can see right through and you can see all the way down to the tray where we're hovering. This is awesome. Now, all the floors are color coordinated here. Uh, beige being the lobby, of course. So we can go up to the second floor if we want to the yellow floor. And you can see we're moving at a pretty a decent pace. Not too bad. It is a, a piston on slowest controllers. Got the nice yellow reception desk. The good old corner office. Very nice. And then, of course, all the office cubicles just laid around. And the bathrooms, of course, on the back. Now, you'll probably notice the floors look very, very similar to each other. That's because they all are absolutely identical to each other. So you can see there, we go up to the orange floor now. And same identical layout. And of course, each floor has the call buttons as well. And if we look up, it's quite an awesome view with all the various seats and just empty controllers at every person's desk. But uh, really just an awesome, awesome view. So anyways, we're going to go up to the top floor here. And uh, we're just going to uh, enjoy the ride. Perfect. So, of course, the uh, the top floor offices, obviously the con gaming offices. Um, very important to have the uh, con gaming colors there. Let's open this door, get in here. Very nice. Just contemplate that big business deal in your top corner office. So, you can see there, every floor is actually identical except for different colored desks. But you could come in here and customize the floors, put down some nice plants. But this is up on the workshop. Um, you can play around with it if you'd like to look at the elevator circuit. So I could have obviously made this logic a lot more compact. I figured lots of roof space, why not make it a little bit more spread out? A little bit easier to understand that way. 
Um, but it works on a really, really simple principle. So right here, we've got the eight controllers, which control the eight pistons between each of the nine floors. And they're all connected up to a memory bit. And the memory bit is connected to a set and a reset or switch. And that's just for easier connectivity. You could actually just get rid of these and just connect it straight to the controllers. But uh, I figure if people want to learn how this works, it's just a little bit easier to have this stuff laid out and easier to see. So when you select a floor, this, this bar of bits here is actually connected to each of the sensors on the floor. So as you, as you might have noticed, as the elevator is going up, on the left side of the shaft, there's a sensor. And as it passes the sensor, it'll actually set each of these bit lines. So if you're standing up here as the elevator moves, which we could actually, let's go, let's go do that right now. So if we get here, we just uh, send the elevator to the first floor. So we'll just hit that button there. So you can see the elevator is moving to the first floor. So as it moves to the first floor, you'll see it moves down on these bits. As you can see there, it's now on the eighth floor. Now it's on the seventh floor. And now it's on the sixth floor. And you can see there it's activating each of the piston bits one at a time. And what's happening is basically this bit here on this side, this series of nine bits indicates which floor you've selected. So you've selected the first floor here on the far side, and this is the ninth floor. So these bits in the middle are saying, okay, I'm on the third floor and you've selected the first floor. So I have to activate that next one. And then it goes, I'm on the second floor and you've selected the first floor. So I have to activate that last one. Same sense if we go and call the elevator back up, we hit the call button. You don't really need to crouch on this. I just find it reduces the lag for some reason. So you can see now it's coming back up. And as it comes back up, it deactivates these controllers. And it does the exact same on this other side here with the reverse where it says, okay, I'm on the fourth floor currently and I need to get to the ninth floor and so on and so forth. And so it'll actually move at a constant speed through all the paces. So it's actually a really easy mechanism. Um, if you were doing it for an elevator that's bigger than 10 or 20 floors, obviously it would start to get or bigger than 10 floors, I guess. It would start to get pretty gnarly using this method. Um, you could start using things like binary counters and, and actually counting what floor number you're on and doing like a step counter that says, okay, I need to do 20 steps or whatever to get to the next destination or something like that. Um, I might consider doing something like that in the future. I definitely want to try at some point in time making an elevator that actually works like a real elevator so you can hit multiple buttons and it'll remember which buttons you hit and it'll stop at the appropriate floors as need be. But uh, overall, I'm just really, really happy with this office building and I'm really happy to get back into the Hover City. I mean, I love the way this elevator works. I love how smooth it is between floors. I love this like glass floor on it. It's just amazing. And uh, once we get to the blue floor there, so it's kind of nice to have these desks because you can see exactly where you are. So I'm red floor, so that means one more and we'll be at that blue floor there, which is actually the fourth floor here. We got the lobby and then one, two, and then three. So perfect. Just awesome. Looking over that nice vast Sahara desert. You know, the one thing I was thinking is sometimes it really sucks to have this really nice office building and not actually be on a terrain map. And so I found this nice flat section of terrain and it really, it just kind of, it makes it so much better. I mean, look at this, look at that view from the lobby. Isn't that amazing? So much better than looking out over dirt. Got this nice cavern valley thingy there. Just, you know, another day at work. Gonna go up to my uh, penthouse office. Wait for this really slow elevator. Is it moving? Oh yeah, there it comes. You can see the, the line of buttons coming down. Come on, buttons. Sometimes if you mash enough floor buttons over and over again, so you just keep hitting different floors, it'll uh, glitch out. I don't know why it happens, um, but uh, overall the circuit is relatively stable. And if that ever happens, it is a module, which is nice. So you can actually, it's not a building or anything. So you can just take it, put it on a lift, put it back and you'll be good to go. It'll reset itself. So let's just, uh, let's just go up to the penthouse there, we're going up to the top floor. Perfect. Oh, look at that, look at that terrain outside, isn't that nice? And just uh, looking down, I guess nothing really down, just dirt, but... I wonder uh, how high we're going to be compared to the trees. Nice. Oh, this is awesome. I just imagine the day when the Hover City works and I can just have it extended out through that section, wrap it through some of these trees. I mean, it won't really move, I guess, but it'll still be awesome to have all these sections floating 
above the forest line and then maybe run the water mod and just be all like oh the world is flooded and it's apocalypse now unfortunately like even this one section here lags so occasionally it drops to right now it's running you know 25 30 frames a second which is a little bit stuttery which it is not it's not unplayable it's not horrible but it's it's not perfect i mean it would be nice to to get it on 60 now on the flat map it was a lot better at 40 or 50 so the terrain map with all the foliage and shadows and stuff turned on obviously makes a big difference but regardless at some point in time it would be awesome to be able to just explore and man that tree makes this building look tiny but anyways guys i am going to keep building uh, hover city modules i do really like doing them obviously this office building is a great addition uh it's uh, it's not a terribly tall skyscraper i had it originally uh, actually 13 floors and uh, I had to cut back four of the floors because it just got even worse in the lag than it is now. And this thing already uses a lot of thrusters to uh, lift it up. But I'm really happy mainly because I wanted to make an elevator that was bigger than four floors. I love this nine floor elevator. Absolutely awesome. I love how it moves smoothly between the floors. Uh, and that's really what I wanted to challenge myself with on this one. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoy it too. So if you have any suggestions for other Hover City sections you want to see, post those in the comments down below. Obviously, leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.